All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another free-to-play champion spotlight. Today, we are going to be reviewing Diabolist. Now, Diabolist is a farmable champion in Stage 12, and she is basically one of the starting five if you are unable to get her counterpart, which is Apothecary. Now, obviously, Apothecary has heals and a couple of extra skills that are a little bit better suited to getting you through the beginning of the game. Diabolist is a very good hero to get you started and be your speed lead. And that's what we're going to be using her for today. Now, I haven't personally tested her in a lot of the areas that we are going to test her in today. So we are going to see. Basically, what we're going to do is, is we're going to take her and put her in teams that I have Apothecary in place of her. And we're going to see how she prevails, hopefully. We're going to assume she's going to prevail. Now, what does she do? Skills. She has an attack on one enemy, which has a 10% chance of placing speed. 20%, I guess, here if you get the extra chance. So 20% chance of sleeping somebody ain't bad. It's not an amazing skill, but it's kind of good when you want to get somebody out of the way. Then you've got attack all enemies, places a 30% increased speed buff on all allies for two turns, which is very nice. And then you have Phil's turn meter of all allies by 15% and decrease the turn meter of all enemies by 15%. Now this skill, I would say, is actually more important for Arena. And the reason being is that Apothecary, on the other hand, does the speed up and the turn meter fill. She will actually lower the turn meter of the other enemies. So by her going first, she's not only going to make you faster, she'll slow them down so that they can't get that first hit in and you can have a much easier time of getting that go first. So that's where she kind of shines would be there. We do not have her blessing as we just got her to level 60 about literally five seconds ago. So I actually threw a bunch of heroes into her to get her to that last level done. Um, act, as far as artifacts go, what I'm personally going to be doing with her is I'm going to be putting her in a stun set. And the reason being is that since she's not as useful to me as what I'm going to show you now, her later game kind of shtick would be to put her in stun and have her be a control hero, which is actually how this specific Diabolist is built. If you are using her in the beginning, you might want to make her more of an attack-based and accuracy-based hero just so that you have the accuracy for the sleep and that you can do a little bit more damage and get War Master. But since we're going to be using her for other stuff, that's how we built her. So Masteries, we have a defensive side. We basically put in a bunch of stuff that's going to increase healing, that's going to increase um, removing debuffs. Let's see what else we got. Counterattacks, reducing damage. We want her to stay alive is really what we want. 50% chance to counterattack when a champion loses 25% of their max HP. And then all the way down to increasing the chances of placing a stun from skills and artifacts since we want to eventually put her in a stun set. Then we've got the accuracy tree. Obviously, this is all the accuracy stuff. We do have a 30% chance of increasing turn meter, which is good. We've got a 5% chance of decreasing cooldowns. I put that on almost all of my heroes. I know a lot of people... When they show these on other websites, a lot of heroes are in this set. And to be honest, I have I, I don't think I have almost any heroes that use this in Masteries because I don't have anyone that I have in those base stat artifact sets. Like I pretty much use Relentless. I use Lifesteal. We use Regen. Like there's all kinds of, of uh, sets that we use. So I don't really put anybody in this. However, if you are using one of those sets, then this could be worth it for you. And then we go down to increase the chance of placing any debuff from skills or artifacts. Once again, we got that extra 5%. We want her to be able to stun the crap out of people when she's actually in the stun set. Her total stats as of right now. Let's go in. There we go. Total stats. We've got 37,000 HP. 2,076 attack. We've got 2,342 defense, kind of about where I thought she would be once she hit 6-star. I actually said between 22 and 25, so we're actually pretty pretty close to what I thought. Speed, we've got her up to 229, which actually is, I think, now my fastest hero because Apothecary, I believe, is 225. Uh, crit rate is 49% because we're not really caring about crit right now, but I would try to get that up at least a little bit. Uh, I did put her in a bit in a crit set to get the extra 12%. Crit damage, 81%. Resist is 149, and accuracy is 151. We kind of want to focus on these two stats because we don't want her to get in stunned, and we also want her to be able to land her stuff. So probably important that we do both of these. Now, where can we use her? So we're going to use her in every single place that we use Apothecary just so we can kind of see how she runs. Now, 
I don't know what she's going to use first in the arena. So this could be a little bit of an issue. Let's see. We'll, we'll go in here. All right. We're going to take Arbiter out, even though she's really good. We don't have a speed lead now, however. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to go back to my old arena team, and we're going to put her in the lead for the speed. So this could be, I mean, well, actually, you would put probably Kalen here, but we'll leave her in for now. So this gives you a speed lead, and it gives you the speed boost. We're going to run this fight first just to see what she starts with on auto, because I honestly don't know. So we're going to find out. I don't know if she does the speed up first or if she does the turn meter. What we do want is the turn meter, which she didn't do. She did speed up, which I guess for this team didn't seem to matter too much. We'll see how they do on auto. There's a lot going on here that might screw with them, but she did decrease their turn meter and increase ours now. For all I know, Diablos could be a better choice for Arena. I don't know. We'll see. Normally, I would not do this on auto because I already am seeing things that I don't like that they're doing. And this is where stun might come in handy as well because you're going to have a stun set probably stunning a lot of these guys while you're doing this. So actually stun in the arena wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, so we're going to take auto off because she's going to keep doing dumb stuff. So we're just going to attack now because we don't care. We're just going to literally just attack with Spirit Host because Spirit Host will wreck Deliana. She, Deliana sucks compared to, to Spirit Host. Now that she's got her speed up because everyone's dead, Deliana will go down. There you go. Bye, Deliana. So we can use her in the arena. Like I said, we're in we're in gold four. We're talking about bronze and silver, essentially, when you're starting this game. Obviously, if I can win in gold with this team, you can win with Kale instead of Dark Alhane and use that in the arena in the beginning. So do not think that you can't win, but you want Diabolus to go first and put the speed the turn meter up. So what you would do probably is go in here. Let's see how it goes. Well, whatever. I'm going to win these fights anyway because they're easy fights. But what I would do is go into team setup and build this team as a team setup and then switch her AI to match. She's not in here. Well, you know, we'll just do it. Let's just do it. We'll put them in here so you can see. Yes, we want to delete this team. We don't like it. All right. So we would put, where are you? Her. We want Kale. We want, who do we want? We want War Maiden and we want Diabolus. So we're going to leave that. And then I would go in here and pick Diablist, and I would make, is it Electric Storm? Which one is the one? Nope, Speed and Turn Mirror. So this is the one you're going to want to add as your first. And you're going to want to do that, and we're done. So now we go in, and we fight. So now she will use her Turn Meter boost so that you can go first. And this is what's most important. See, and he'll, she'll lower the Turn Meter of the other team, which gives your other heroes that may be a little bit lower speed a chance to actually get their turn before the other guys start wrecking your whole team all right just do it one more time because this is an easy win and i want to get it you already saw a hard fight i don't need to show you another one but this is essentially what you want to be doing with your first team she is one of the starting five if you don't have apothecary and this is why she's in the starting five she will help you tremendously in arena especially if you don't have apothecary that's right has anyone had trouble beating arbiter well, there you go. You 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 now can beat her. She's dead. All right. So that's where Apothecary is used on my team. So we know she's good in Arena. So that's one. One down. We've got one thing she's useful in. Let's go in and see if healing is that important. We're going to find out right now how important healing is. We're going to go into stage 20. This is where he sits, but we're taking him out. All right. Goodbye. And then we are putting Diablist in. So now we're going to try it with this team and see if they can win. Now, honestly, if it was me choosing a hero for this team, I would probably remove one of these and maybe put in another damage dealer. But we're going to try it just to see if they're capable because it obviously works with Apothecary. And I think she does more damage and actually does a little more wave control either way. So... But this is where the stun set would come in handy is in a fight like this because now you've got Syl doing stuns and you've got Diablos doing stuns. So basically no one in this team is going to be taking a turn anytime soon and it'll make your wave clearing easier. You don't have to worry about anyone dying. So there you go. And she increased the speed on everyone, which is nice. It'll get your turns over faster. It'll get Syl moving faster. 
The only downside about her, like I said, is that she doesn't heal. That's the only only negative of Diablo. So you need to have Valerie if you're going to try doing this, which is basically the starting five anyway. So you'll have the healer and the shielder to keep your heroes alive. But as you can see, since she's so fast, she's getting her turns pretty quickly, actually. It's kind of nice. And it's funny because I said Diabolus could be a replacement for Syl, but she doesn't revive, so she's not going to replace that, but she can be crowd control. Now, we've got her in a build of all speed. Diabolus, we have her in a build of all speed gear and a crit rate set with a little bit of a shield on it. That's basically a beginning build. This is not a build. This is literally the build that you'll probably have her in, which is why I'm not too upset that I leveled this gear. And I can easily put these speed pieces on another hero if I get my speed, my stun set. She may work just as is. I mean, I don't know. We're going to find out. The stun set's good, but I have Sil, so I don't really need the stun. But in Doom Tower, you're going to have rooms where you need to beat things with only rare heroes. So Diabolus is a pretty good switch over since you won't be able to use Sil in those rooms. Which is why we eventually would put her in a stun set. So if you're not doing hard Doom Tower or really super worried or concerned about Doom Tower secret rooms in normal, then you could just leave her the way I have her built with all speed. But as you can see, she's not she's not hurting. We have Valerie to heal. We have Syl healing up. So Diabolus, I mean not Diabolus, uh, Apothecary wasn't totally needed for this fight. I feel like there's certain fights where she's not going to be able to handle what Apothecary does, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to literally try to throw her in every fight that I use Apothecary, and hopefully it works. And that way we can finally find out if these two are both somewhat equal in the sense of what content they can clear. Now, so far, it doesn't seem like there's much of a difference. I don't know what the fastest time on this run was. Remember, we are on stage 20, so it's not like we're doing stage 10. Because I want to see her actually work in these dungeons for you guys. I want you guys to know, and I say this in every video, I want you guys to know that I'm not telling you to build heroes that you can't use later. Like that, oh, you're only building this hero so you can get through stage 10 and possibly up to 15. Like, no, this hero is completely usable even up to stage 20 and beyond. The only thing you got to do is build them better. There we go. Never forget, it took me seven months to get to this day. So if you're in the first month and you're like, oh, it's never going to happen. I'm like, no, it'll happen. You'll get, you'll get your teams built. I have faith in you. So, so far, this is pretty much exactly the way I thought. Unless somebody gets, like, dramatically hurt. Oh, that was bad. If someone gets dramatically hurt by an attack where they drop to, like, really low HP, that's the only time that Diablos isn't going to be as effective as Apothecary. Because you've got her, say, she's doing the shields. She's got removed debuffs, so you don't have to worry about all those poisons. And then Syl heals every time she attacks, so that's good. If you don't have Syl, you could literally just bring another healer in here. And your team should be okay. And I don't see why this wouldn't work. I would assume you would want somebody who can clear waves and have some kind of control if you are going to replace Syl on Stage 20. But when I made these videos on Stage 20 Dungeons, I was basically playing this with the assumption that if you're actually worried about Stage 20 Dungeons and you're up to those quests, that you already should have Syl at that point, more than likely. Because it does take a, a reasonable amount of time to get to these dungeons. Come on, Diabolist. Can you get us through it? I mean, it looks like everything's going pretty well. Granted, I do have my team built pretty well. We have a lot of the faction guardians in. We do have a decent amount of Great Hall. We have a lot of buffs. The arena, we're up in gold four, so we do have some extra power there from the actual Great Hall there. And yeah. But you will get there eventually. That's the whole point. Now, my only concern with this team and using Diabolist is the last second. Because I don't want them to get hit and get one shot. Which is a possibility. So, 
This seems to be going a little bit slower than my last run. I think more than likely, if I was going to change anything here, it would be taking maybe Spirit Host out and putting in another damage dealer, like Frozen Banshee or something like that. Someone who can add to the poisons to make this fight go a little bit quicker here. And it wouldn't really affect the wave clears. So this might be the end of us. Let's see what happens. I was hoping she got the shield in. All right, we got turn, turn meter boost. We got block debuffs. I was really hoping she was going to put the shield there. All right, we made it through. Shield is gone. Can we win? It's funny, I actually ran this the other night and just did a bunch of runs. I think I actually normally do put another DPS in here because this is really slow for what I'm used to. I think we usually do this fight in like like five, like four or five minutes. All right, so hopefully the shield doesn't go up and we can kill her. So yeah, another damage dealer would be better in here. Don't do not do this team 100%. I would pull Spirit Host out and bring in another damage dealer. Oh, wow, she just got like three turns. In, what? Four? <laughs> All right. We got Sil going, going ape smack. All right, so they did win. Life is good. I thought she was going to hit the last hit. I was like, that's cool. There we go. Dragon dead. That was a long fight. So, yeah, see, as you can see, our best time was three minutes and, and thir 16 seconds. So that was a long-ass fight. But this is also kind of a team that you can build. Uh, I would switch out, definitely switch out Spirit Host 100% and just put in another damage dealer. That was way too long of a fight for this team. So there you go. They can, She can be replaced. Let's get out of here. Where else are we using him? Uh, all right. So now we, we use him in Spider. But I don't think I don't think she can replace it because she doesn't heal herself back up, and he actually keeps the tank running. I would say earlier game you could probably replace an apothecary, but most of the time you don't even have apothecary in your team for spider. So I don't know. If, I don't think this is a good match. I don't think I'm gonna even waste my time with it because, like I said, she doesn't heal. The whole purpose of apothecary is that he can heal Drexstar when he gets really low. So if that doesn't happen, Trekstar will die. But seeing as I'm a jerk bag, I want to see. We want to test it. That's the whole point of this, right? We want to see what, what she can do. So let's just do it. Actually, I got to go in here. We're going to pull. We're going to go click, click. And we're going to just do that. And then done. All right. Because I needed to make sure that I forgot that I had to make sure all the, all the skills work. So let's see what happens. I don't think this is going to go very, very far. But you never know. If you have... And stunning isn't a good idea either. Because then the spiders won't get a turn. I was like, you know what? We want to see who, where she can win or lose. That's the whole point of this, right? This is more of a... as Not as much of a champion spotlight as it is a champion test. But it's still good enough where we can kind of see what she's about. All right, so the good news is, is we have her with high enough HP where Drexstar is still the target. So that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Because the reason Apothecary works is because he doesn't get targeted. However, if he dies, she is the next target. And she does drop turn meter of everything. So honestly, she might even be better. I don't know. Like I said, this is like, I don't know. You're learning this as I do, as I'm learning it. That's why I'm, I'm kind of interested here to see how this goes. But see how he's already down to low HP? So you have to be able to do that provoke attack where he hits everybody in order to make this work. So if your Drexstar is beefy, then this isn't an issue. Because technically speaking, Diablos will just never get hit. It's really just based on your Drexstar is really what it is. And I think it's kind of cool that it might actually be better because you have – she does speed up and turn meter increase on separate skills, which means you're basically alternating. So I don't know if that's actually better for this fight because you might – because your speed will go up for like two rounds and then 
that might wear down a bit, and then all of a sudden you get your turn meter boost to kind of make it your heroes go faster. So to be honest, Diablos might actually be better for this than Apothecary with, with this current setup. I'm curious what the final time on this is going to be. If they win, which it looks like they are. This is like a science project instead of a uh, champion spotlight. This is why I said I wanted to just try it. I'm like, who the hell knows? I've been saying that Diablos is a good replacement for Apothecary since like day one, and I never built her because I just didn't need her. All right, let's see how they recover. Nice, we got that big smite attack right there. Yeah, definitely, if you get Sill, I would save up, when you're getting close to Sill, I would save up all of your coins that you get, 20 coins, so that if she pops up in the shop, you can buy her once you get Sill, because Smite is great for Sill. All right, so it looks like Diabolus is holding her ground. I thought she healed everyone, and then I realized Sill just went after her, and it healed everyone while she did that turn meter spin. I think we have... Uh-oh. All right, he's getting a little bit of a heal. So I, this is probably going to require... Maybe not. This might require a revive. All right, we got speed up. Can he get the provoke off before he dies? Nope. He's going to die. So there we go. Now we're going to have to get that revive. So that's good. We're back to square one. But now Syl is protecting her. Him. We just need to get him healed up. He needs to get that provoke attack off so that he can get his HP back. There you go. Got a little bit of HP. Well, a lot, actually. I forgot how much HP he has. All right, turn meter's going down. We don't want her to heal again. It is the Spider Queen, correct? <laughs> All right, come on. Turn meter reduction. Turn meter reduction. That's always good. Nice, getting those extra hits in. Yeah, that, that decreased turn meter is kind of nice. Uh-oh. Is this the heal? I think this is the heal, right? I don't remember. I don't want her to heal. Okay, good. Decreased turn meter. Maybe we can kill a couple spiders before the attack. I don't... Yep. Yeah. Oh, good. It wasn't the heal. Nice. So we're good. There you go. We got HP burn off, and this spider's dead. All right, so there you go. I was wrong. Uh, Diabolus can be used for Spider 20 if you need it. There you go. Replaces the one. Now, best time was 3 minutes and 30 seconds. This is really just based on whether or not they hit their decreased turn meters and when the HP burns go off. So 5 minutes ain't bad. I'm not going to say it's better or worse because I've had this kind of time with Apothecary in here. There you go. Uh, all right, let's get out of here. Where else do we use him? All right, we did Dragon. We did Spider. Minotaur, I think, should be fine, but we'll run it anyway, just because. So we're going to do this, get him out. Now, we're going to do this with the original heroes. So we're Spirit Host, so we're going to put her in there. All right, so this is the team that I use now originally to farm my... What the hell are these called? Scrolls. There you go. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Now we're going we're gonna to put somebody in here. Here, we'll put this boy in here. We'll put you in there. Let's see how they do, because he's not very good. So I want to make sure they can run it. I want to make sure they can do this without help. I mean, I can't see why they wouldn't. To be honest, actually, I ah, did I put Valerie in here? I don't know if I should have put Valerie in here. She has the shields. There's no healer in here. I just realized that. So this might have been a poor, a poor choice was putting Spirit Host in here. I probably should have put Valerie in. But we'll see. I mean, we're already in. What's the worst that happens? Luckily, Kale has lifesteal. And Spirit Host has lifesteal. So I don't see why they wouldn't win. Because just those two alone can win. <laughs> I 
<laughs> uh, I love watching Lord Legionary try his hardest. It's it's the best. Well, it looks like this is going pretty well. Oh, that's right. I forgot Lord Legionary actually has a a heal. Well, a continuous heal, but a heal nonetheless. I was like, where's this HP coming from? But it looks like it's working. It seems like Diabolus is very good if you have a secondary healer, just in case. Unless you're killing things faster than you have to worry about HP. In which case, it doesn't really matter. But look at this. All farmable champions on that on the four. Because like I said, we don't even have the masteries for Lord Legionary. That's the whole point of doing this run. Is that you want four heroes that can get you through the fight without dying. That's it. They just have to win. So I would try this with Spirit Host and Valerie just to see which one works better for you. If you're if you're a little bit weaker, I would say Valerie would be your best bet because she can do the shields and heals and she'll extend your buffs and stuff. So that might be a good idea. But either way, this seemed to work. This Spirit Host will help you get through it faster. So if you're already like, okay, she'll increase your attack a lot more and then get you through the wave quicker. So it's really up to you which one you choose. They're both basically interchangeable at this point. So yeah, Diablos can be worth into your Minotaur farm for stage 15. She can do Dragon. She can do Spider, which I was honestly freaking shocked about. I didn't think that was going to work. Now, this I don't think she can do. Again, we're, we're going we're gonna to see. Team setup. Is this what my Fire Knight 20's team is? It is my Fire Knight 20. So we are in here. This one's going to be rough because I don't think... There's a lot of healing in here. Oh, that's right. I forgot we got to go in here. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to take her out. Actually, you know what? Maybe, uh, I won't leave her in there. I don't want to mess with that. So we'll keep that. So that's Spider. Let's go back into the Fire Knight. And we're going to take our little boy out. And we're going to put her in the lead. I don't know if, it's, if that's attack. If she does attack up in every... No, it's only in Faction Crips. All right. So basically everyone in here sucks uh, for a lead. All right. So I guess we're just going to use the crit rate. Might as well, right? It's something. So we'll take her out. Take her out, put her in the lead, and we will take... Where'd she go? I lost her. Here we go. All right, and now we just got to make sure that they have their stupid skills on, because I, when you change them out, it hurts you. So we want turn meter reduction, first choice. Round three. Round three, first choice. Always my first... Now, the reason I don't think this one's going to work is not because of the healing so much, because the whole point of this is that you, that the Fire Knight doesn't get a turn. My concern here is the fact that Apothecary has a three-hitter on his A1. That's where I would be concerned on this team, but we're going to try it, because I know that Apothecary will heal and use speed up more than he ever uses that three-hitter. So I don't know if it's actually going to be a problem. For all I know, the turn meter reduction on her attack could be more valuable than the three hit on Apothecary, which he only uses maybe once every three to four turns. So I could be wrong about it. I don't know. We'll find out. This is probably the most excited I've been about a champion spotlight in a long time because I actually get to see finally how Diabolist and Apothecary stack up with each other. And so far from what I'm seeing is is outside of the healing, Diabolist is no joke compared to Apothecary. Like that heal is is really good. Don't get me wrong. Like when you're in a, a serious situation and he gets he'll get you out of it because he'll get your tank back up on her, on their feet when they're like really close to dying. Whereas Diablos can't do that for you. The only thing she can do is speed you up to get you back to someone else getting somebody back up. So that's really, really, that's the only weakness I would say so far that I've seen that she has. And then once you put her in the stun set, I feel like she might kind of shine over Apothecary. Or it would be one of those situations where Diablos and Apothecary together could be a really good team for just having you constantly getting turns. And if she was in a stun set, yeah, you're just constantly healing, 
speeding up and stunning everything in a wave. So those two together could probably get you through every single wave if you got decent DPS. I'm starting to get sold on her is what I'm saying. If you weren't sold on her yet, I'm sold on her. And we don't even have a lot of defense on her. Like my apothecary, I think it's like 32, 3300 defense. She's got 2300 and she's surviving. So. so we can make her way more defensive because she's not, you don't even need her attacking. Like, like what's that going to do for you? That one little wave. So that's why the stun set's probably more important than trying to increase her attack power. I don't think her attack power would ever be at a point where you're like, oh my God, she's amazing as an attacker. All right, almost there. Can she survive the wave? I almost want her to die so that we can re resurrect her with more HP. Every time I put a sleep up, there you go, stun. That's better. Great. Now we have defense up. Well, that's all right. Now, now she won't. He won't. Is that? A, I don't even know what that is. That that thing won't get a turn. Because Armor Girl will just keep him on a unlock now. So once you get to the last hero, you're in good hands with this team. You don't have it takes a little bit longer to beat stuff, but you pretty much just don't have to worry about turn meter ever. There you go. Dead skis. So far so good. Now this is where the real test is. Because I don't know if it's gonna matter about the extra hits that Apothecary does. I don't think it will because you do have her, but if we can't get the shield down, then you're kind of effed, right? He's got to do that and get the turn meter down. And then somebody's got to do a turn meter reduction before he gets the shield back up, which isn't going to happen there. But the first time is always the hardest one to block. So we'll see. Now we've already got it down to seven. See, this is where that would be helpful, but we got it down. So there we go. So they can get the shield down, which is good. And this is all about trying to change your teams up, basically. We want to make sure that you can use different heroes. Like, if you already have Apothecary, would I say go out of your way to build Diabolist? I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's necessary. It can't hurt you having an extra speed lead because you could use her in tag team. So, like, you could have Apothecary, um, Diabolist. There's a couple other ones. And then Hykatoon. So those are the three that everybody gets. Well, if you have Apothecary. So if you do have Apothecary, just use those three as your speed leads in Tag Team. And there you go. You don't have to worry about turn meter increase. Normally, I wouldn't watch this entire fight, but I want to make sure they can win. Because that's the whole point of this, is that it looks like they're doing it. It looks like it's going to work. He doesn't seem to be getting a lot of turns, which is good. It just sucks when you get in a cycle of, there we go, heal reduction is good. That means if he does get into a cycle where we can't get the shield down quickly, like the first turn, then he won't heal that much, which is, it's great when you have turn meter reduction because you can just lay on a bunch of debuffs while this is going on. And they're just going to be on the boss the entire time until he gets a turn, which could be never or could be maybe once. The only downside to it is that you don't get Smite to work because he doesn't get a turn. So it's just going to sit up there like a like a crap debuff. I'm still shocked that still got four turns in a row on the dragon. All right, so Diabolus is holding her own. I am... I think I'm as shocked as you guys are if you are shocked. Like, I really didn't think this was going to go as well as it is. And I didn't even build her that great. Like, yeah, she's like 30, what is she, like 33,000 power. She's not like insanely built, but she is, she's reasonably built. I would, I would say she's well built, not crazy. She's got a couple four star pieces of gear on her. She's got crit rate, like instead of defense, which like I said, doesn't really help her, but it's what I had because I was trying to get speed on her. And I think one of those pieces, one of the crit rate pieces, I believe I rolled a three, a three roll on speed, which is why I was like, ooh, and I threw that on her because that's amazing. 
So that's why we're using that set, because I wanted speed on her over everything else. I didn't give a crap about any other stat, to be honest. Nice. This is going... This is a going well. I'm not even worried about Ice Golem so much, because Sill is good. I don't know if I really want to run that one. We'll see. I think I want to test her. We tested her in Arena. We've tested her in at least three dungeons, so you know she's at least worth building if you don't have Apothecary. So I don't have to go crazy running every single dungeon in this video. I don't want it to be an hour-long video on Diabolist. But we'll go into Doom Tower and just kind of see how she how she does. But look, holy shnikes. So there you go. We won. All right. So, so far, Diabolist is just as good as Apothecary. There's, I, I saw nothing wrong with that fight. Literally zero wrong with that fight. Cool. Get out of here. Let's go see some other areas we can use her in. So let's check Doom Tower. And she has sleep for Sand Devil, so that could also be something that you might want to think about. All right. Uh, here we go. Doom Tower. Let's see. Where do we use her? All right. We'll do. Can we do? Do I have any silver keys? I do. We'll do this fight with him. This is kind of a dumb fight, but whatever. We'll do it anyway. I, I mean, I'm pretty much going to guarantee they win this fight. Start. But just so you can see, like, this is a team that you can use. This is an easy-to-acquire team for Doom Tower. And they work. There you go. No turn, no problem. And since Valerie is not in this team, but this is a team that's built just to kill. If you are having trouble and your hero's a little less on the defense side, then yeah, you would once again bring in Valerie. But yeah, Diabolus can handle everything that is thrown at you in the beginning of the game. Because even if I don't do the final fight with her, because I did it yesterday with the other champion spotlight with uh, Dark Alhane, we did the final boss area, like what it was 119, right? Before the end of Doom Tower. So yeah, there you go. You can use her as your five man extra in Doom Tower. It's no problem. She does her job just like Apothecary. There you go. Um, let's see. We'll just do... Let me see where I used. I don't think it will work on the end here because we use Apothecary here, but we're going to try it just as the last test for her. This is the final test. Is Will she survive and help this team get through 119? Here we go. Is she good enough? We did survive this with the other team with Apothecary. So this might be, this could be her graveyard. We'll see what happens. That AOE, the AOE decreased turn meter is no joke, by the way. It gives you at least an extra turn before they get to attack. So that could honestly be a nice little additive in here. But like I said, I would probably put, if this was my team, I would 100% put Syl in here because I don't know if they can serve, if Diablos would survive in here so much. Because if she dies, then it, it kind of ruins the whole point of bringing her in here to begin with. Kill him. All right, good. We got through it. Let's see. Right there would be a great stun. All right, so we got some nice shields going on. See, this is why having Spirit Host and Valerie in a shield set. Oh, nice. We got the, the freeze. Take him down. Boom. Another freeze. She removed the buff. Is she going to get her turn or no? Or she's just going to sit there like a douchebag. There we go. Another attack. Can we heal? All right. Dead skis. Is she going to die? Can we get through? Oh, good. Just made it. So far. All right, decreasing turn meter. That thing is, that's, honestly, that decreased turn meter is kind of what's making me like her more. Because she's doing, she's making it so that they don't get that quick extra turn in the beginning before your team. So, that might be exactly what you need to get through the Doom Tower waves. Like, even if she dies here, who cares? Like, But she didn't. She's definitely not getting that sleep off, I'll tell you that much. It's like a 20% chance on 
level 231. All right, this is... Is she going to live through it, is the question. This is honestly shocking to me. I'm surprised that she's not dead yet. Me of so little faith. Holy crap. There you go. So, Apothecary was my best time, and it was 70 turns. She did 79 turns. So, I guess the question has been answered, guys. Is Diablos a replacement for Apothecary? Uh, yeah. I mean, essentially, she is 100% a viable replacement for Apothecary. You can totally use her. Boom. Win-win. Stage 119 of Doom Tower Normal. And we have all these heroes that you, every one of you guys can get. Farmable, farmable, farmable. You definitely will get her, and then him you can pick from the beginning. There you go. Problem solved. So, what have we learned today about our good friend and new partner at level 60, the ever-so-sexy demon, Diabolist? What have we learned? We've learned that if she's fast and she's built pretty defensively with enough to keep her alive... Yeah, you can use her everywhere in this game if you don't have Apothecary. So we finally have the last hero of the starting five, the actual starting five, even though I would place Apothecary as my starting five if I pull him. I would 100% now, if I was starting this game over again, I would immediately build Diabolist, and I would be 100% fine with that, knowing that she will work in the places that Apothecary works. Now, there are going to be times in the beginning, I would assume with her, that she's not going to work as well as, as, as Apothecary, only because in the beginning, you're going to be weaker, so you're going to be taking more hits, and you're going to need that heal to get through stuff. And possibly in Doom Tower Hard, she might be a little bit harder to work with, unless she's in the stun set, so she can keep things from hitting you. In which case, I would say she probably is better than Apothecary, because she has the AoE hit, so yeah, I would say, I don't think there's honestly a better or worse here. I think they're both good. I think if I was, I would build both either way. Even if you have one or the other, I would build both immediately. So that's the Obelisk. I will now be doing the five starting champions video, and I'm going to hopefully get that out on Monday. So this is the Obelisk. This is Mobile Gamer Nerd. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this Diablist running of dungeons. It's fun. I, I misspeak all the time. You guys have a great day. Take care.